This might come as a surprise to some of you, but I'm not always reading books. Sometimes I watch movies and TV shows, and I've stumbled upon a genre recently that's really intrigued me, Afro-surrealism. Today we'll talk about what the genre is, how it came to be, places that you may have seen it but not realized it, and some books that we can read to get better acquainted with it. Let's get into it. If you've never heard of it before, Afro-surrealism is a cultural and artistic movement that combines elements of African cultural traditions with surrealist art. It's a way of both expressing and exploring the Black experience and identity through a dreamlike and fantastical lens, and you might see abstract elements or imagery in the works as well. It all comes together in a manner that's intended to use the power of the imagination and creativity to engage with the complexities of the Black experience and Black history. There are a few areas that Afro-surrealism is rooted in, but mostly it's from the historical experiences of African Americans and the broader cultural and artistic movements of the African diaspora. And just a side note, the African diaspora refers to the dispersal of people of African descent from their ancestral homelands. Usually this is due to the transatlantic slave trade, but it can also include other forms of forced migration. The cultural and artistic expressions of the African diaspora have been shaped by the experiences of the displacement, as well as the oppression and resistance experienced along the way. Afro-surrealism drew inspiration from the broader surrealism movement, which emerged in Europe after the aftermath of World War I. Surrealism aimed to tap into the subconscious mind to create art that challenged traditional artistic and social norms. The Afro-surrealist movement adapted these techniques and used them to explore and tell the stories and experiences of Black people. Also happening in the 1920s was the Harlem Renaissance, and it was one of the earliest influences on Afro-surrealism. It was an intellectual and cultural revival of African-American music, dance, art, fashion, literature, theater, politics, and scholarship. And as the name suggests, it was centered in Harlem, which is a neighborhood in Upper Manhattan in New York City. Though it spanned the 1920s and 30s, it helped to lay the groundwork for the Black arts movement of the 1960s and 70s, which played a key role in establishing Afro-surrealism as a distinct artistic genre. Afro-surrealism is gaining popularity in mainstream media, but you may have seen it without realizing exactly what it was. It's prominent in TV shows like Donald Glover's Atlanta and Terrence Nance's Random Acts of Flyness, in movies like Sorry to Bother You, directed by Boots Riley, and Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele, in music like The Carter's Ape Shit and Kamasi Washington's Hub Tones, and in art with artists like Wangechi Mutu and Jean-Michel Basquiat. And of course, we see it in written works as well, via books and authors, so let's dive a little bit deeper. Arguably, two of the most famous Afro-surrealism books are Toni Morrison's Beloved and Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. Beloved blends elements of surrealism and the African-American experience. In it, we see the ghost of Beloved being used to explore the psychological and emotional impact of slavery on the characters in the book. The novel has a really loose structure and a non-linear timeline. It's told in a meandering way and uses flashbacks and storytelling over the 40 years covered in the book. In Invisible Man, we follow the story of an unnamed black man who struggles to find his identity and place in society. His experiences are marked by a sense of invisibility and he's constantly overlooked and disregarded due to his race. There are surreal elements throughout the book that highlight the psychological and emotional toll of racism and oppression on African Americans, and they create this dreamlike atmosphere that mirrors the disorienting and dehumanizing experiences of the narrator and his community. Both of these works dug the foundations for later titles like The Sellout by Paul Beatty, which won the Man Booker Prize in 2016, and The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, which won the Pulitzer in 2017. The Sellout follows the story of a narrator referred to as Me or Bon Bon. He lives in a predominantly Black fictionalized neighborhood of Los Angeles known as Dickens. In an effort to combat the gentrification and erasure of his community, Bon Bon engages in a series of outrageous actions like attempting to reinstitute segregation, owning a slave, and even reenacting scenes from the racial minstrel show Little Rascals. All of these actions serve to highlight the deep-seated racial inequalities and injustices that still exist in modern-day America. Beatty uses satire and surrealism throughout the book, and this allows him to challenge and subvert traditional racial narratives and to shed a light on the absurdity of the racial hierarchies that still exist in contemporary society. In The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, we follow 
told the story of Cora, a young enslaved woman who escapes from a Georgia plantation and embarks on a journey to freedom via the Underground Railroad. Except in the novel, the Underground Railroad isn't a metaphorical term, it's an actual, real, and physical underground train system that transports escaped slaves to different parts of the country. A slave catcher named Ridgeway is depicted as a mythic figure and he embodies the legacy of slavery and white supremacy in American history. There are so many other books here, but I just want to go through a couple more that are on my reading list. The Salt Eaters is a novel by Tony Cade Bambara that explores the themes of mental health, spirituality, healing, and community in the Black experience. The story is set in a fictional community called Claiborne, where a group of characters come together to organize a healing ceremony for a woman named Velma. That ceremony is led by a healer named Minnie, who possesses mystical powers and is able to enter a dreamlike state to heal her patients. The Water Dancer by ta Coates tells the story of Hiram Walker, a young man born into slavery on a plantation in Virginia. Hiram has a supernatural ability to remember everything he has ever experienced except for the memories of his mother, who was sold away when he was a child. After a near-death experience, Hiram discovers that he has the power of conduction, which is the ability to transport himself and others across long distances through water. So with that, he joins the Underground Railroad and becomes a conductor. And while he's helping people escape from slavery, he's also searching for information about his own family and past. We're gonna stay with the water theme for just a little bit, but before we do, I just wanna point out that Africa has celebrated Black Mermaids long before Disney. And I highly encourage you to look into the West African legend Mamiwata, which has existed for six centuries. The Deep is a novella by River Solomon and reimagines the Mamiwata legend. The story follows Yetu, a member of a mermaid-like species and descendant of African women who were thrown overboard during the transatlantic slave trade. Yetu is the historian of her people, responsible for carrying the memories of her ancestors and sharing them with her community once a year in a ceremony called Remembrance. The weight of these memories eventually becomes too much for her to bear and she flees, but as she explores the surface world, she starts to question her role in her community and the burden of carrying their history. The Deep explores themes of memory, trauma, identity, and the search for belonging. So Afro-surrealism is a way that Black artists of all types have turned to the weird and the dreamlike to explain and examine their circumstances but I don't think that the works are ever intended to be too wild or absurd. Really, I think they're just extra real. I see it as a way of reflecting what's going on in the now, and sometimes that revelation about a once hidden or lesser known reality makes the work have that much more impact. And in a lot of ways, just about every Black person is an Afro-surrealist, because in a world where we're seen as lesser than, where vestiges of slavery continue to manifest themselves, where we have to fight for basic access to human and civil rights, we have to be able to imagine something more than what is right in front of us. We have to imagine another world beyond this one where we're just normal people living our lives.